The Square Ball Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. It's brought to you in association with Levi Solicitors. 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan, Michael and Rob here to celebrate something that happened in 2014. An exciting time in the, no, an eventful time in the history of Leeds United. There were exciting moments. Not on the pitch. Such as the one we were discussing, we are <laughs> discussing today. Well, I suppose, yeah. A confusing time, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> We'd gone a bit, this was sort of our Nottingham Forest period, wasn't it? Just signing everyone. Mm. Didn't really matter if we'd heard of them or not. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, so we just played um, Accrington in the FA Cup in real life uh, at the time that we're recording this. So we are looking back on our game against them in the League Cup. The uh, the Capital One Cup, as it was back then in August 2014. Uh, on paper, it was a fairly routine 2-1 win against them. Um, but far more happened on that day. As you know from the show title, uh, this is the square ball guide to the Kung Fu debut of Gitano Berardi. <laughs> Uh, right, let's uh, show you how Leeds got on this evening uh, in their game with uh, Accrington. It's the first win for Dave Hockaday. It was comfortable in the first half. They took a 2-0 lead. Both goals coming from one of their summer signings, Suleiman Dukara, known from Catania, the of the striker. That was his first. And uh, 20 minutes or so later, just before half-time, he got his second. That's finished as well. As that was 2-0 at half-time. He's looking to bounce back from that opening day defeat at Millwall. But got a bit of a scare with six minutes to go. James Gray pulling one back uh, for uh, Atkinson. And then maybe these fans got even more concerned when uh, they went down to ten men. Berardi, Gaetano Berardi, <laughs> receiving a straight red on his debut for a rather acrobatic challenge. He was off, but in the end it didn't matter. Leeds uh, holding on to that 2-1 advantage and they are through. That little chuckle there in the reporter's voice possibly tells you a lot about what that was like. Uh, obviously, the, the footage is on YouTube of, of Berardi doing what Berardi was doing. We'll get to that in due course because this is uh, the summer of Cellino um, and it's always worth kind of framing where Leeds were at that time. So where were we? A complete shit show is where, where, we, where we were, what we were. Um, yeah, we had Dave Hockaday in charge, someone who I think it's fair to say no one had heard of a couple of months before we'd signed... Absolutely tons of players. Some of the players we were still trying to get rid of. We lost our opening game, but this was our this was the first home game of the Hockaday era. <laughs> it's a short <laughs> era, isn't it? He doesn't feel like it wasn't long enough to be an era, was it? No. It was his, it, was it, it an age? It definitely wasn't an age. No, I spell. Can't, yeah, it's, about... it's maybe a spell. <laughs> yes, as manager, I think we're gonna we can call it that. Not in the Harry Potter sense. No. But uh, yeah, so we we lost to Millwall on the opening day, which was it's fine. We lose to Millwall. That's that's just what we used to do. We had been terrible. I think Hockaday had tried to say we were actually much better in the second half, but that's because they stopped playing. That was um, he brought Lewis Cook on, didn't he, to sort of salvage the game? And Lewis Cook gave away a penalty. <laughs> but he was a child at the time. He so was. So. And this, so this, and this was um, this was Cook's first full debut. In this game, was, well. was this the first home game of the season then? So it would have come after the league opener midweek then. Yes, exactly. So it was our it was our first chance to see some of these players. So, so it was presumably there was a lot of excitement with the uh, the crowd. Oh, it was a it was a bumper crowd of yeah, uh, well, th- about thirteen and a half thousand. Oh, how times have changed. Now we're <laughs> selling out league cup opening round games at Ellen Road. But did either of you go? I was there. Yeah, I was actually weirdly I was quite close to the the Berardi incident that we'll come on to talk about. For some reason, I was sat with Moscow in the East Stand Lower for this. I think it's just because you could see it anywhere. I think it was one of those where there were tickets available for the whole ground all at the same price, and I thought, probably want to sit down for this one. <laughs> <laughs> just rest my legs. Take, the... take a cushion and a blanket. Just rest my legs for the evening <laughs> rather than stand it up in the cop. Leeds lineup then. Um, who was in it? Well, I've tried to piece together the, the formation from this as well because... Hockaday was forced to play the midfield diamond, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Forced to play is the way of describing it, definitely. Because, because Chilino liked a midfield diamond. So, poor, poor Dave. So I'm guessing... Quite narrow. I'm guessing the, the team was um, Stuart Taylor, also making his debut, that permanent sub-goalkeeper. I'm going to say it's a very rare appearance for Stuart Taylor, isn't it? He must have been fuming. <laughs> <laughs> I've left my gloves at home. I, I don't even own any shin pads. <laughs> so you've got Stuart Taylor, you've got Charlie Taylor, um, Jason Pearce, Scott Wooten... Good solid centre back pairing. Yep. And then Berardi, right wing back. Then. New, new boy. Yep. So that's his debut. 
we've got Lewis Cook making his first start in midfield and alongside Tongi with Bianchi, I guess he was like the the holding player he, of, of his day, wasn't he? He was the championship Perlo, wasn't he? That was how <laughs> he, he was filled. Along with uh, Nicky, Nicky A- Ajos, as Moscow calls him, <laughs> is in there somewhere. I can only guess he was playing behind Smith and Dukara. Yeah. But really, who knows? <laughs> that's, that's Matt Smith as well, Mathieu. Mathieu our, Smith, our, yes. Our half French boy. Yeah, yeah, the Accrington team could go through it, but you probably wouldn't, wouldn't really know anyone there. Windass, who plays for Sheffield Wednesday now, I think. Or is it Wigan? Someone like that. One of them. <laughs> he's, he's in their team and um, the man who will come off the bench to be kicked in the chest, um, Will Hatfield. And yeah. set up the goal, actually. Mm. Former Leeds Academy prospects. I think he'd made the bench once against Spurs in the FA Cup at Ellen Road. Uh, never actually got on. So um, I think he was fuming not to be starting. Uh, but yeah, it did come on with 15 minutes to go and drive into the box and cut the ball back for their goal. While we're on the subs, actually, you know, the couple of things that happened in this game, no material impact on the game or indeed on Leeds United. But Zan Benedicic came off the bench for his debut in this one as well. Do you yeah. remember that well? Oh, yeah, do either. AC Milan, wasn't he? The he excitement. Was. God, this AC Milan wonder kid that we get in. He's going to be great. He was tall as well. I remember being struck by how big he was for midfield, central midfield. I think, yeah, I Which was uh, Eleonora Chilino's yeah, boyfriend, yeah, was, was it him? him. Right. That was him. Yeah. So we were at some, one of his two appearances. I th- in fairness, I think he did get injured, didn't he? So he was. Um, he maybe didn't have the chances he, he should have done. On the subs front, Noel Hunt came off our bench along with Benedict at the same time, and that was his final appearance for Leeds. That He came on for Ajo's, didn't he? And uh, Paul Leon replaced Dukara. Um, late on as well to a stand innovation Dakar is that right that's what one of the reports said <laughs> I don't remember it I mean I was in the east as I said I was in the east end so I could sit down so yeah. whether or not it moved me to get off my seat I don't know but, was it um, a, a seated polite ripple of applause <laughs> I would guess I think he was good in this he was good but no no Hunt this is probably worthy of an episode in itself here but we would had um, Chilino calling him out saying he was earning 25 grand a week and which he, he wasn't by all accounts but th- the truth in Chilino was they didn't always match up, did they? No. He was like, "Well, that's the gist of it." I'll just say it's a, it's a lot. It I'll was say, a lot of money. Say some things. <laughs> so does it matter if it was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we go one 0 up, twenty minutes in. Um, Barardi with the assist. Often forgotten, I think. Yeah. That Barardi gets the assist. I didn't remember this. It, it's a good goal, actually. Dakara takes it well. Ball gets played in swim. I think what's weird about it is Barardi wearing the number twelve. I was mm. watching it, thinking something doesn't feel right here, and then like, yeah, it dawned on me that it's because he's wearing the number twelve and not the. The 28. But yeah, it's, it's a good goal from Dakara. He did, I mean, he was a terrible player, but he did occasionally do sort of good things. The, the volley against Forest a few years later been the uh, mm. the obvious one. But yeah, he takes his goal well. And did you see the south stand erupt? Um, no. Do you not remember that? <laughs> was there anyone in it? I can't nope. say. <laughs> Completely empty. Completely empty. Fine. Um, yeah, I mean, the, it was a, it had a very, these games had a real pre-season atmosphere. The, the, there were a lot, a lot of cup games we had around this time where there'd be like somewhere between about nine and 15,000 people there. And it was, um, imagine it now where, you know, you get a bit of a different crowd for cup games, don't you? Because there's some extra tickets available so you get kids there and stuff. It was like that, but everyone was miserable. <laughs> 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 On all the goals scored at the South Stand end of the stadium as well. So um, you have to, you missed out if you went in the cop end, didn't you? You didn't mm-hmm. see all the action. Um, he took his goals well, both of them. Yeah, and at this stage with Dakara. This is only second game, so maybe he's brilliant. He's um he's still on loan at this point, isn't he? Is he not? Yeah. So we loan him for about a couple of weeks, then it was like, oh shit, we need to sign him permanently so we can loan more other randomers in. Was it Catania we got him from? Something like that. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So he's at this point, he's going to be the next big thing. I think he's Dakara. That was the real weird thing with this season. Absolutely every single thing pointed to it being a disaster from Dave Hockaday to bring in a load of players you've never heard of from a league that's not at all comparable to the championship. But there was still a bit in my head going, what if it works? Like, there's something about everything changing that makes you think, there's, there's a we chance. Chuck, if we chuck everything at the wall, something's <laughs> got to mm. stick. There's a chance yeah. this yeah. is going to work. And Dakara in this game would completely led us on. We were, uh, we were a few weeks away from getting Adrian as well, weren't we? That was the big one. <laughs> the the oh, unicorn. Yeah, we've got, like, the air to Zico coming in. It's going to be great. <laughs> It's funny, uh, Hockaday, do you remember Hockaday's quotes after the Millwall game that preceded this one, where you hear what he says and you think, you're just projecting here, Dave. Because he said it of Dakara, he said, he didn't do himself justice on Saturday at Millwall, he was a rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> hey, are you talking about 
yourself there, Dave. Dave Ockaday was always absurdly confident, I thought, as Leeds manager. Yeah, it was, um, I spoke to Dom Polion, not the summer, just gone the previous summer, and he was just like, he's a very strange man. Mm. He, he, he talked about how um, Dave Hockaday used this analogy of like a Disney film about how they were all a family. Croods, wasn't it? Yes, that, yes, was, that, that was, was it. Every, every time I see the Croods on like the Sky Planner or Sky Cinema or whatever, oh, I always think of this. No, mm. I always think of Hockaday. We, we have that bond. And yeah, Polion was saying that they were all just sat there like, what is this guy on about? It's a bit <laughs> awkward. <laughs> the Croods as well. It's not, it's not a Disney classic, I wouldn't say, is it? Like I've seen it because I've got young kids. It's no Lion King. Publishing. It's no Lion King, is it? No, and it's not. And as a result, because of the time it came out, it's not going to be a touch point for most footballers, is it? No. Like Dave Hockaday has presumably seen it because of grandkids or something. Because he thinks it's amazing. <laughs> but he's just obviously has loved it <laughs> and has, has talked to everyone. He's like, obviously, I've seen the Croods. Like it's like it's one of the old time, like it's Jungle Book or something. But yeah, the idea of him just <laughs> going on about, going off one about, you know, because in the Croods, this happens if I'm being like, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on, they're on the bus to Millwall. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like Titanic when the ship sinks, is it? You know, that, yeah, <laughs> everyone knows. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, so Dakara has put us two up. They they pull one back um, and are pushing for an equaliser at Accrington. Uh, we've not we've not mentioned Dakara's second goal, which is a, another delightful finish. Well, he goes through the middle, doesn't he? And then cuts from his right foot to his left foot and then properly curls it round the keeper. There we go. We've done it now. Nice, but Lewis Cook's involved in this. This yeah. is what this is. It all starting to maybe fall. Oh, into is place. it all going to gel, Michael? Possibly, because Lewis Cook did look brilliant at what? this point as well. We'd seen a, a, we'd heard about him, and I think at this point, I think Chilino had already said, "There's this guy in the reserves, mm. Lewis Cook. He's brilliant." So he'd been talked up, and then in this game, he was really good. And this, his little through ball, and then yeah, Dakara's running one way, knocks it between the defender's leg with his right. First time finish with his left. And suddenly we've got a jam on our hands. Get him signed down, uh, tied down permanently. Sign him. Well, it's like with um, with Lewis Cook. As soon as you saw him, it was, I wonder who he's going to join next because mm. you just knew he wasn't going to play for us for very long because he was a complete class apart even at that age. Yeah, and I think his his career since has been obviously massively hampered by injury. I think it's he had he had a lot more potential than he has fulfilled. I think because of um, because of injuries than at Bournemouth. Speaking of potential, Dave Hockaday's quotes on uh, Sullivan Dakara. What a weird uh, thing to say. Yeah, he looks impressive tonight. The thing about him is he's got potential. And my definition of potential is that you haven't done anything yet. Cheers, Dave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, one of those things you probably said to him and he was thinking, <laughs> yeah, fine. I mean, the car of... of... It's, like in the, it's like in the cruise. There's about an hour in, there's a bit where he's... he's, he's like a, oh, he smashes this he's rock. like a little cave... He's the youngest of the cave baby things and... Anyway, I'll I'll I'll, sh- I'll lend you a copy. I'll lend yeah. you a copy. I've got it on DVD. There's the car there who's you know being Senegalese. His, his first language is going to be French, mm. presumably. Just going no, me oui, daddy, <laughs> I, I will watch it. Le crude. merci, le crude. Uh, So Will Hatfield was on the receiving end of of the the scissoring from uh, from Gitano Baradi, and it was late on. So they were pushing for an equaliser because Leeds did that Leedsy thing of looking comfortable, but it started to just get away from us and. Um, one-time Leeds youth player, as you say there, Rob. So this is how he remembers uh, Gitano Baradi doing what he did. I, I never actually felt it because he like he didn't really put two feet together. He like wrapped his legs around me, so I didn't really feel much contact. So that's why I didn't actually go down and make a meal of it. I was just so surprised that I was just thinking, "What's he doing?" It's like <laughs> he hasn't hurt me. He's, why, why has he done that? And again, I was obviously. Being a Leeds fan, I didn't want to start causing a stir and pushing and start a fight or anything. So, because I was young as well, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to keep quiet here. But if he did that to me now, 10 years on, I'd probably think, right, I'm going to go try and uh, do a bit of a meal of it and uh, probably square, square up to him, you know, what it's like in football handbags. But, um, yeah, I was only young and I didn't want to upset the Leeds fans, so I thought I'll just, uh, I best not do anything. <laughs> didn't want to upset the Leeds fans, God bless him. I did, um, Put to him after that, like, oh, you know, knowing what we know about Berardi now, it's probably a good job that you you didn't square up to him out ever. And he's like, no, no, I would have done now. <laughs> okay, <I'll, laughs> you're a brave boy, mate. <laughs> um, good, it's on the website, isn't it? Um, it is, yes. That one, so have a look at that. Uh, the the feeling of what's he doing was, I think, what everyone thought in the stadium. Yeah, it was, it was on the because it's not a challenge you see. Isn't the the double legs round the <laughs> chest? <laughs> like, not as a rule. No, but you you used to see. There's a type of bad tackle you used to see in football there's like the there's the the one where you go over the top in someone's shin there's the getting the knee from the side there's the raking down of the Achilles there's lots of classic ways you can get sent off yeah this it was like kung fu kick to the chest oh no no <laughs> okay 
I actually remember it as um, it wasn't until watching it back that he takes it well, Will Hatfield. Like he mm-hmm. just stays up on his feet. I presumed he was just crumpled up on the floor and needing urgent medical care. But no, he uh, he takes it well. And yeah, he did say to me that after the game, he sort of spoke to a few Leeds players and they were like, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> I don't really know what happened there. <laughs> well, only one man could possibly explain it. And that's Gitano Barardi, who we spoke to after he just after he left Leeds. And it came up in conversation. So the, the point of this conversation is that I asked him if there's anything about his time at Leeds he, he might change. And he, he touched on the Accrington red card. Is this is this a sufficient explanation in your opinion? I will change uh, uh, some little as- aspect in my character. I, I probably could, I could have controlled uh, <laughs> so, something uh, in a better way sometimes. <laughs> I mean, because because you got sent off on your your first appearance on your debut, didn't you in the in the cup game? Yeah, but <laughs> that was that was an accident. But uh, <laughs> but uh, in other moments, uh, I had to. I probably had to to control myself uh, much better. Because oh, he doesn't count that in his red cards, does it? <laughs> like, ah, it's just an accident. It just <laughs> oh, I've, I've dropped a jar in the kitchen. It's sp- it's smashed on the on the floor I've had to clean it up had a bit of an accident and I've two foot my wife in the chest <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was an accident it's one way to explain it isn't it god uh, I miss him so much just yeah. hearing his voice then was lovely it was uh, yeah it was it was good fun and, and it's like all these things that you can kind of look back upon the madnesses um, mm. a little bit more fondly with the passage of time interesting to see how he changed as well during his time at Leeds like the Barad watching him in this game he's like a different man to the one that left isn't he like the, even the appearance of him I think it was only about four years in she started realising how handsome he was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, handsome and, and a killer. <laughs> well, we knew that <laughs> yeah. at this stage. Yeah. Um, so in the aftermath of this game, we did we did make it through. Um, and what was the what was the follow-up? Well, we were, we were signing more players was the first thing. Amongst them, some young Chesterfield centre-back called Liam Cooper. He was about to come in alongside um, Billy Sharp and a guy was going to be really, really you know, get the dressing room together. Yeah, He's just yeah, a real yeah. good guy. What's, what's his name? What's his name? Seppi Belushi. Ah. He was coming in too. Yeah. So, yeah. And that was, um, we signed Cooper after trying to sign him. And mm-hmm. then, did we release a statement saying we, we're not going to pay that transfer yeah, fee? Which was 800 grand, wasn't it, I think? And then, yeah, the opening day defeats a Millwall. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Have all the money in the world. Take it back. <laughs> yeah. Take it off the website. Take it off the website. Again, a classic bit of Chilino to be like, no, we're going to put out a strong statement. Then, ah, oh, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Ah, what can you do? Hey, take it off of the website. <laughs> it's fine. I didn't mean it. And in terms of taking stuff back, actually, we come to the next round, don't we, where Hockaday was almost sacked after a defeat against Watford, wasn't he? Yep. So two weeks later, this is August the 27th, this happens. So um, we've, we've lost to Watford and he's he's nearly sacked him. Then we go to Bradford. Yeah. And that is actually the end for him. And it was all looking so promising as well. I remember it was, it was a relatively close game, wasn't it? And then we scored. It was Matt Smith. We'll put us 1 0 up, 82 minutes, and you thought, ah, we've, we've probably done this now. No. I remember having one of the most shambolic weeks of my life. At, at that, cause I was, that summer, I was um, I was working between Nottingham, where I was at uni, and Leeds, because it was the summer and I was kind of back home. And then the week of that Bradford game, I'd just started a new job in Nottingham, and it was like my induction week. And then I think it was on the, the second day. Um, they were like, we need a photocopy of your passport. You're not legally allowed to work for us. And I was like, well, my passport's in Leeds. So they sent me, they basically sent me back to Leeds. I had to get a National Express back to Leeds, pick up my passport, get the National Express back. On one of those journeys, I managed to just pick up a virus or a bug or something. I spent the rest of the, like all night just puking up at home. I had to ring my new job and be like, I know you've sent me home to get my passport. Well, now I'm ill and I can't actually come into work. They were like, he's definitely lying. (laughs) Yeah, not a great first impression. And I started to feel a bit better later that day. And um, there was no internet in my house at that point. So so I've Imagine that, kids. I know. (laughs) So I went out to the pub. I was like, right, I'm finally feeling sort of well enough, enough well enough to go to the to pub. go to the pub to watch Leeds <laughs> what, and then, what an absolute hero with about 20 with about 10 minutes left I thought oh no fuck it I feel terrible I need to go back home and then yeah then I got home and saw that we'd absolutely messed it up against Bradford it was a great day <laughs> I was hoping that story would end with you shitting yourself to be honest <laughs> no <laughs> not that one <laughs> <laughs> plenty more though like yeah. that yeah. you did mention before that you you spoke to the wrong person when you yes. when you rang Will Hatfield who did you speak to what did they we, have to say um, me and Moscow were watching the clip and we thought we just saw number five on the back of the Accrington players shirt and we saw that they had a, a left winger called 
Piero Mongoya or something. Mm. Um, so yeah, I tracked him down and messaged him, and he was like, "Yeah, cool, I'll speak to you." Uh, just so you know, it wasn't me that got tackled. I was like, "Oh, sorry, mate." <laughs> Should have a chat. Probably, probably won't, probably won't <laughs> yeah. speak to you then, if that's okay. Well, yeah, the postscript to it then is after going one nil up at Bradford, eighty-two minutes, they scored on an eighty-four and eighty-six, and and beat us and knocked us out of the cup. And Hockaday was sacked the day after. This was when uh, the game where. Hockaday was doing his whispering to Junior on the sideline. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the pair of them just, just covering their mouths like, fuck, oh shit. What do we do about this? Going to get sacked, aren't we? What, <laughs> oh, is it going to be enough to, for a new kitchen and the old payoff? And that, was, uh, and that was Matt Smith's final act in a lead shirt as well, really, wasn't it? He was sold on the final day of the window the week after, having just signed a new contract in the summer. And been given the number nine shirt, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Great days. I feel like every time we start these podcasts and... Dan, you asked Michael, so where were we at the time? You always go. <laughs> the we shambles. Complete shit show. <laughs> well, it's all stuff from the last 20 years, isn't it, pretty much? So I think there was one where we were in a good place, but, you know, not this one. And um, I was in the, I went to that Bradford game and the away end massively turned. People yeah. people were not happy with Hockaday being appointed in the first place. We'd had some, even though we'd, we managed to beat Borough, didn't we, as well under him? when Billy Sharp scored. But yep. generally speaking, we played like absolute shit. Yeah. And thankfully, um, we had Redders in for a bit, but then they brought in the steady hand on the tiller. That was Milanich, who lasted about just as long. Another golden era, that was. <laughs> I mean, that is a separate show for itself. That is the TSB guide to Berardi's Kung Fu debut. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast. 